My name is unimportant, and my accomplishments are few. But of, I feel I can truly share with you, without fear. Now, in this present moment, which is the only time there is, you speak to me of the moon and of a man who is more than human. For there is no full man without woman. Be well, and may you find all that you seek, Traveler, for it will be much easier this time. I know the moon looks great, with much cloud cover, with enough gaps to illuminate. When I'm traveling and asking much, hoping the juicers fill my open, pleasing self, Continuing to travel, not thinking, I look again, watch the skies, they are clear. Doesn't look as cool as when it's cloud cluttered, rather boring, with an almost round yellow-white disc, like a tooth unbrushed on solid glowing blue-black backdrop. Still cool, but not comparatively as when it's alone, not surrounded by a chaotic mess of whirling junk that itself changes its light and shadows on how it moves. In the now of communication, the moon has wispy, smoking clouds drawn near as opposed to then, thick and fluffy. Coincidentally, when my mind is reaching activity once more, likewise in smaller, thinner streams, perhaps it all does go together, or I am the truth. I suck at poetry, and knowing how much I should dedicate to doing and longing for doing as it seems like doing makes me sort of bored, whereas longing for doing makes me think of all sorts of things I will do once I do it, yet once I arrive, I'm all, now what? No, it doesn't make much sense to me either, except intuitively, perhaps. Attempting to nail it with words and rationality reintroduces doubt, but without attempting at least to allude to it, it will altogether disappear. Furthermore, a man alone, without a dose of woman, is a dead stone, and a woman, without a dose of man, is a dead pool of water. One needs a drop of stability and another a drop of change in order for both halves to be whole. To be fully enlightened, awakened, to be entirely disillusioned and disenchanted would make one just as boring and static as one wholly swept up in the game as the stereotypical Japanese salaryman. Get drunk, get drunk, and cuss, and, cuss, and gamble, gamble, and hang with whores, and, and get violent with money rubbers between preaching the good news. Just as I decide, I've had enough, and if I do travel not, I won't be able to enjoy more tea. I'm approaching the city again with all its lights, the moon darkening and growing yellower and grosser, the backdrop now fully black and void. I am happy to see my goal recede and become less enjoyable, then at that moment about half the lights of the lot simply shut off, and I am faced with the fullness of the moon once more. Looks like it ain't letting me stay too far behind. And then I raise my head from communication and it has completely disappeared behind a tall building. You're having fun with this, aren't you? Two can play at that game. Getting mighty burnt jack-o'-lantern orange now. What's that? You're just another finger? Let's keep at it. And just when I'm filled with inexplicable glee, monologuing, maybe madness is mirth. With the moon, I think, careful with that friend, you are traveling hard now. And then I hear approaching travelers look back and dodge the traveler on a collision course with the traveler.
And now the moon is almost invisible, save for some peaks between the trees and above commercial interests. How fascinating to be completely unbothered. I am watched over. But it would seem I am fully again mired in illusion as I am now the returner to a divided mind of self-examination. It's been fun, Moon. We'll be we'll chat again later, I'm sure. Just in time to need to recharge my front light. It all go, does go together if you let it. Dark now in the courtyard. Where's that skinwalker? The sun and moon transform day to night, but what transforms the mind?